Good afternoon, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I always say the same thing. I'm going to make a video. Today is June the 21st, first day of summer. It is 12.09 in the afternoon. See, I'm always putting time down because that's what I do when I write in my diary. I, be, I keep track of time. Uh, I don't know how... I'm sure there are people who sit down and they write in their diary and they don't even mention the time. Uh, but I'm always aware of time. I thought I mentioned that in my last video about this is the time to seek the Lord. This is the time that when you're born, this is the time when you're going to die. It's, there's always time. This is the time to go to work. This is the time to go to school. This is the time to go to bed. This is the time to eat dinner. There's always time. I don't wear any any clocks. I, I have clocks around me. I always have to know what time it is. It may, it's an obsession with me. So now it's 12.10. As, as is my routine, since I'm a diary writer, I am writing in my diary. I'm on page... Oh, it's focus. I'm on page 523 for the year 2023. 523 for the year 2023, huh? And it is the, it is the 21st, first day of summer. And in this video, I am not going to ramble. I'm just going to show some used books. These are not from the Friends of the Library used book sale. What these books are, are thrift store books I got a couple weeks ago. Well, last week, okay, last week was the Friends of the Library used book sale. And Wednesday, I went down to help at the Friends of the Library used book sale. And I went down, you know, late morning and there was no parking. So, I have been thinking about going to look for some new jeans. <laughs> I don't like shopping for clothes. It does Carol. We're not into clothes. But I needed some new jeans. And it's really hard to find the right size for me. I wear, uh, you know, I'm, as i gotten older, I'm losing my height. So, I, I'm about... I have a 38 waist and a 29 inch, you know, 29, 38, something like that. And I like the stretched waist thing, you know, wrangle. So anyway, I went look for jeans. I found two pair that fit me, which was amazing. And then I stopped at Goodwill North Side because I was went to Marmart, Walmart and then I went to Salvation Army since I was out that way I don't go to Northside Holland I just shop around here thrift stores around or at the book nook and but also a couple of weeks ago maybe two weeks ago I stopped at Action House I was out I think I hadn't gone to Action House which is just down the street. And I told you they had vintage books. That somebody had uh, inherited a library and the Action House was putting these books in a, like in a cabinet for display for people to buy. And I stopped by Action House. I've shown you a couple of those books I found. So I thought it had been a couple of weeks and I wondered, did they put any more books in the in the vintage book cabinet kind of thing. Because most of their books are in a different part of the store. So I go over there and I find these books. And some people will say, well, you know, they might not be into this writer or this poet. He's, he's a writer and a poet. 
but I was kind of pleased because I collect this poet writer and I didn't have any of these. There was one, two, three, four, five, six of his works in the vintage book cabinet that I did not have. And uh, I'm going to show them to you. And these are the ones that I found at Action House. It was a couple of weeks ago. And um, I I got all six of them. What was it? Yeah. I think they're going for like a, well, two dollars a piece. And one was four dollars. So two, four, six, eight. I got for about eleven dollars or ten dollars these books. And I was really surprised. So I'm going to show them to you. I know some people could care less. And my wife could care less. But I collect this guy. I lo I've been reading him since I was, I can remember, maybe when I was in high school. And they're all by Bronkowski. This is Notes of a Dirty Old Man. This is the one that was more expensive. It was like four dollars and I took the, the you notice they put these sales things on here price tags well I took the one off this one and it it tore off paper so I didn't take off these because it just it just ruins the book but this is Bronkowski this is what really uh, this is published by City Lights books in San Francisco and this is the one book that kind of launched his, well, he had been writing for years and years and in small little poetry magazines. And, um, but he wrote an article called The Dur Notes of a Dirty Old Man in a, an underground alternative newspaper back in the 60s. I think that was in the 60s. This came out in... This is copyrighted in 1969. This this is City Lights edition published 19. This is second printing June 1974. So I found notes of a dirty old man which I didn't have, and the other ones are all published by uh, any book by Black Sparrow Press. I collect, and these are all by Black Sparrow Press, which no longer, I think their back catalog was bought by somebody, but they no longer publish books. But this is uh, Charles Bronkowski's Women. Uh, this is a novel he wrote. They're all, they're all kind of autobiographical. Women, which I didn't have. And then Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. And this is poetry. This is also by Black Sparrow Press. This was copyrighted 1969. This was published. I don't know when this one was published, but these are poems. The days run away like horses over the hills. And then there was Mockingbird Wish Me Luck. And this is also poetry. Uh, Black Sparrow Press, Los Angeles, 1974. And then this is a novel. They're all kind of autobiographical. He lived in Los Angeles, the L.A. area, Hollywood, by Charles Bronkowski, and this was copyrighted in 2000. And then the last one I found by Charles Bronkowski, or Bronkowski, Selected Poems, 1955, the Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame, Selected Poems. 1955 to 1973 and yeah this was published Black Sparrow Press Los Angeles 1975 so I was really kind of pleased I have a huge well now I have more I've shown them that I have DVDs and biographies and 
other books. So I found these at Action House for my Bronkowski collection. And then I told you uh, what that last Wednesday, the, the library, Friends of the Library used book sale. I couldn't get into the, couldn't find any parking. I went to look for jeans, found some. But I found these books at uh, Salvation Army. And I found, uh, well, I still have the, the sales. Slip. What day was that? It was June the 14th, 2023 at 12.01. And I bought these books for $6. And I found Kingly Amos, his short, uh, Mrs. Mr. Barnett's Secret and Other Stories, Kingly Amos. Who was the father of Martin Amos? And then I found uh, David Meloff, uh, historical fiction, imaginary life. I had two other novels by him in my library, and I can't find them. This is a vintage international, but I collect. I found this at Salvation Army. And then I found a biography on George Sand, the writer, by. Uh, his name is Curtis Kate. I have Curtis Kate's biography on, um, oh, I have his other biographies. Oh, I can't remember now. I think he wrote one on, uh, oh, I think it was on, on Nietzsche. I have, I have another, I have two other biographies by him. This is on George Sand, the writer. Uh, he also wrote, uh, oh, some other books, but I can't remember now. But anyway, this is his biography on the writer, French writer, who was married, I think, to the composer Litz, Litz. George Sand, a biography by Curtis Kate. And then I found at Salvation Army a book by Frederick Brown. I have Frederick, two other books by Frederick Brown. I have his biography on Flaubert. And he wrote a book on French history. This is also on French history, Embrace of Unreason, France, 1914 to 1940, by... Uh, Frederick Brown, yeah, he wrote uh, a Faubert a biography, National Book Critics Award finalist for biography. Uh, yeah, he wrote. He's written other books. Uh, this for the Soul of France, and uh, so I found this at Salvation Army. I collect books on Paris. Modernism, French history. Uh, I have a huge Napoleon Bonaparte collection and a lot of French writers. I, I wish I don't speak French, but I'm, I look for the novels of George Sand, which are hard to find used, but I found this biography. So, so I found that at Salvation Army. And I went to Goodwill, but there was nothing at Goodwill. I got these books uh, when I was setting up for the library used book sale. I found two books the first day, and and I don't consider them a part of the sale. It's like when when I was setting up, help setting up for the Friends of Library used book sale. I found a novel by, called Mrs. Bridge by Evelyn Evan S. Connell. I have other books by him which I'll show. I got a book of his. I have two. I had two other books by him in my library, and as I was reading a book just recently, I can't remember the title of it, but one of the main characters was is mentioned reading the novel Mrs. Bridge, and I never heard of it by Evan S. Connell. I never heard of it, and so I, when I was uh, Setting up for the book sale, I saw it, and so I bought it for a dollar fifty. So, 
And then when I was setting up, I found this historical novel, and I have two other, uh, he writes kind of historical fiction somewhat, and I, I didn't have this one. This is the Book of Q by Jonathan Rabe. I have two other no uh, historical books by him. I don't have the Overseer, which is mentioned here on the bottom, uh, but this came out in nine, 2001, and uh, his novels look really interesting, the, the subject matter, um, so check them out, go to Amazon, type in the title and read about it. He's he kind of writes interesting books. I did finish a book I, I got at the library, the Friends of the Library used book sale. I finished yesterday, The Literary Life, A Second Memoir by Larry McMurtry. And I knew I had another memoir by him, and I found it yesterday. I have this one I have. This is the... I think his first memoir, Books, Larry McMurtry. Those who know about Larry McMurtry know about Lonesome Dove, and he wrote novels based in Texas in the West, and uh, they're not all based in 19th century. They're all 20th century. Uh, he's written almost 40 books, but he was a bookman. He started bookstores, and... He owned uh, bookstores in Washington, D.C., and then he bought all this property in Archer City, Texas, and six buildings, and he would go around the country buying libraries that were going out of sale or bookstores, used bookstores going out of sale. He was always buying books, and so he writes a lot about books, even here, about writers he's known or writers he's likes but I don't remember if I read this <laughs> so I got it out to look through it I don't remember if I read it this came out and see there's all a list of all the books that he's written I mean he's written a lot of books <laughs> he says and he says at the end of this he considers himself a man of letters because he's right he's written nonfiction he's written fiction He's written uh, reviews. Uh, he he's mainly also wrote a lot of movie. Uh, he was a screenwriter. Uh, uh, four or five of his novels were made into movies, like Lonesome Dove. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember the other ones that were made into movies. I think the most famous one was. Oh, what was it called? What well, Terms of Endearment was made into a movie because I saw that one. The Last Picture Show was made into a movie. I think uh, some others were made into a movie. Uh, I have his other memoir, Walter Benjamin uh, at the Dairy Queen, which I can't find. I did read that, but I didn't know where I put it. He also wrote one called Paradise, a memoir when he visited Tahiti, the South Sea Islands. I've read that one, but I can't find it. Paradise, I can't find it. So I'm not sure if I read books, but I got it out because I might read it. I'm not sure. But I did really enjoy reading The Literary Life of Second Memoir. It's kind of, it's kind of like very short. Some chapters are only one page. But if you're into the literary life, you're into writers and writing and the literary life, and and he was a writer. He wrote like you know forty books and screenwriter and did reviews and uh, so I enjoyed reading it. Also, I picked up uh, Friday when I volunteered at the Book Nook last Friday. You know, all the books have been boxed up, but before I went, I unlocked the door of the store, the book nook. I went to the auditorium where all the books were in boxes. And I went to the table called nonfiction, and I went to the table of history. 
and I just opened them up and looked at what was on the top and I found this one in history at London Thames, the river that shaped the city and its history by Gavin, Gavin Wainmint. As you know, I collect books on London, on London, England, and I have other, I collect books on rivers, famous rivers, so I found that. And then I found in the nonfiction section a book that I've been reading <laughs> last couple of nights, uh, America, American Fun. Uh, Four Centuries of Joyous Revolt by John Beckman. I'm really enjoying this. This is kind of intellectual, kind of cultural, sociological history. I've enjoyed, I read this yesterday and I'm enjoying it. Uh, I like cultural history, intellectual history. I have books like this in my library and uh, I, I'm enjoying reading it. So I got this Friday, it wasn't really at the book sale, but it was, I got it from the book nook, American Fun. <laughs> so these are the kind of books, and I also got and these in the mail yesterday. These are my Father's Day gift from my Amazon gift card. I got three novels by Victor Serge, published by the New York Review of Books, Conquer City, Victor Serge. Translated by Richard Greenman. Uh, Midnight in the Century by Victor Serge. Translated by Richard Greenman. Greenman. And then Unforgiving Years by Victor Serge. Introduction and translated by Richard Greenman. I, I, as I've said, uh, my, I think Victor Serge is one of the great writers of this century. Now, I know that I've read a lot of books in my 53 years. Uh, I've been, well, I've been a Christian 53. I've been, I've been reading, I don't know, since I was a early teenager. But I wanted, I have, I've read his other uh, memoirs of a revolutionary, his notebooks, Men in Prison, his, uh, he was an anarchist, communist, but he was a great writer. I can't go into any more, but I really wanted to fill out my collection on Victor Serge and published by the New York Review. What's it called? I always get it confused. The New York Review Books Classics. So I got that one, and then I got this one, and then I got this one. I've been looking at the introduction to this one, so I might read it. But I've been reading the introduction to this one, the foreword. So those are the books. Uh, I'm going over 25 minutes. This thing's going to shut down. Like I said, today is a Wednesday. It is the first day of summer. I'm getting over my cold. I'm sick, but the Lord is slowly healing me. I hope you're having a good reading week. Thank you for all the comments. And until next time, bye.